Welcome to a new series. I've had this van for I don't know how long, probably eight years, and I've never insulated it, done any paneling to it, or any kind of stuff on the back. It's just been a work van for me. But, uh, you know, I, I've been staying at tracks in the van with an inflatable bed for so long, and you get condensation on the roof, and then you get woken up to sweat because it gets so hot. In this episode or video, uh, we end up paneling and insulating the van, and this is what it's gonna look like. I'll give you a budget breakdown, and you can follow along on the channel. Make sure to subscribe, and we're gonna keep uh, advancing on the van, building cabinets and molding, and uh, the TV with the PlayStation and all that, and more stuff trackside with tools and generator and outlets to charge your uh, your impact gun and things like that. Many ideas to come. We have it. We're gonna do it. We can weld. We can cut wood. We can do all this. So I'm pretty excited about this build. Here's how we did it. And don't forget to subscribe. Welcome back guys to another episode of R&D Garage. Today we're gonna be working on something a little different if you saw in the title. We are gonna be working on my van right here. Um, a little bit a little bit you need to know about the van. I've had this van for about seven years. I've put over 80,000 miles on it. Um, it is at 230,000 miles right now. It is a 5.4 V8. Uh, yes, the one with the spark plug issue. I replaced the spark plugs when I first bought it. I haven't replaced it since. I don't want to touch it. Um, it runs fine until when it doesn't. I don't know. Um, basically, I've kept it like this because I've always been scared. I purchased this van for $1,000. And I've always been scared that one day something's gonna happen and it's not gonna run. And okay, it's thousand dollars, that's fine, I used it plenty. But um, whenever we sleep in here at the track or any other time, um, the roof is metal and when it's cold outside, there's condensation and I, you actually get woken up by water, teardrops falling on you and stuff, because it's cold. And whenever it's hot, so in the morning, you get cooked and you're woken up by sweat. So it's it's bad both ways it works i mean i've been doing it for seven years i've been going to track events and i've been you know enduring it and I, that's the least of my worries when i'm at a track event it's usually more worried about the drift car or whatever's happening in the competition than it is sleeping in the van you know that's not a problem uh we can get through that we're all guys but this trusty old van has done me well and still doing me well so I've decided I'm gonna try to do some upgrades to make it better and just more enjoyable at the track. Even like when you lose after competition, now you have a van to relax in, or you know, it's less stressful rather than everything else happening at the track. This van used to be an old Stanley steamer. Um, you can't even tell, but right here, it's still kind of messed up in the, in the glass. It says expert grout cleaner whatever it used to be a stanley steamer that's why it's yellow on the inside and when we first purchased it they they had a giant machine right here so it's like a giant roll for their vacuum thing or pressure washer i don't even know um so basically they had actually had a bunch of holes on the ground for the machine to be bolted down to the frame underneath so what me and my dad did is we actually just bought a two, uh, piece of plywood and prop, 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 drilled it all the way through and it's been there for seven years that is literally the floor of my van there is nothing to it so i have thought about some improvements the number one thing that happens with the van is it ends up getting covered in tools tires jack parts and there's barely any living space in it so when you get there you got to unload everything so you can actually sleep in it and then load it back up um i want to do certain improvements to the van number one i want to make it insulated so that way no more heat no more cold it will happen obviously but a lot less so that'll be nice uh, also lights LEDs it'll be good on the battery and it'll be nice and bright in case you need to work on anything in here um, the back part of the van is going to be mainly for car stuff there's going to be a toolbox over here on the side and some cabinets up high for parts or whatever we need and there's gonna be a sofa that'll turn into a bed and then there will be some kind of cabinet up front and a TV. That's all I've come up with. I want most of it to be removable. So in case I need to bring a sofa in this way or I'm moving or I'm helping somebody move something, the van is still useful and not just a camper van. That's not what this van is for. I would love to live in the van and travel across the US with my drift car in tow and you know, just show you guys different drift events all over the United States while I travel in the van. That would be amazing. That would be a great YouTube channel. But right now that's not feasible. If it ever happens, that'd be kind of cool. 
I would probably need a bigger van or I'd need a lot more improvements. But because the van is so small, we need more space, more compartments. So my brain has been thinking about some stuff. The spare tire is under there. It's useless under there. That is a lot of space. I've already removed it and this is how much space we have left under here. Boom. I've measured it. It's about two by two and a half feet of just space. So I'm going to remove this panel and I'm going to see what it looks like under there and how we can create a space for cabinets, for tools, extra batteries, uh, parts, uh, water, whatever we need for this van. I have these um, leftover one inch square tubing from my tire rack. Because my tires are on the trailer now, they don't need to be inside the van. That clears up a lot of room. All I have to do now is make some more room for my tools. Then we'll be set. hole right there that's the exhaust that's the diff and the axle um, I don't know why they made all these holes I think that was an exhaust maybe for a generator there right and the exhaust went out that way and then I don't know some bracket that bolted onto here and there then it had some stuff facing down or uh, you know it was four pieces I don't know but this was a work van that's what they use it for that's what I'm using it for but I'm gonna make it so I can use this room back here, well, underneath there, as a storage room. We gotta cut all this, that's the scary part. Okay, that was really annoying. Um, basically a knife and some scissors, and now we have our storage area. When you compare it to the rest of the van, you kinda know the size. That's gonna be pretty good, it's about 27 inches across and two feet across, 24, or two feet up, so 24 inches. Um, thinking about it you know you could place a battery here another battery here some space for something else maybe a water jug over here who knows in case you wanted to build some more stuff that way it's not inside your uh, living space I've been watching a lot of uh, van life videos um, and it's, it's pretty inspiring what people have done in these vans and how uh, they how smart they start getting with all the little spaces um, inside to, so that they can manage uh, space better so they can fit in it and live in it but um, pretty good ideas I've got from a lot of people and cabinets up at the top are the best smartest thing because that is usually negative space no one ever utilizes or uses the floor is usually what everybody's using no one builds up and your head is usually not in the corner of the van it's in the center sorta of. so uh, cabinets are something I want to think about and also, they put their battery and their sink and their water jugs and stuff kind of like around here underneath the bed uh, by the wheel well or so. And I didn't like that very much. I was like, that's space that can be used for living things, uh, clothes or whatever you guys in the camp life are doing it. But that's why I thought of this. I said the spare tire back there is a waste of space. You need to use your space better. Also, this keeps your uh, weight uh, center of gravity low which is good for me for towing you gas mileage and tipping and wind and just everything it's just easier to drive um, pretty excited about this a good setup hopefully some other people utilize it too yes it does include metal work so you do have to do some fab you have to weld and cut grind but at the end of the day that's gonna save you more space and when it comes to living in a van this small or going camping in a van this small space is something you can't go without. Look who's here. Josh made it just in time for the revealing of our new storage cabinet thing floor secret trap drawer. Yeah. That kind of rhymed. Here, hold this. Let me kick it from underneath.
I don't think it's cut all the way. I guess so. But we're out of blades. Come on, baby. There we go. That's the floor. What's this? Uh huh. So this is what you couldn't see from underneath because uh, it's dark. This is the spare tire holder. That's where your tire attaches to. Um, yes, there is some rigidity to this that you would probably need from the subframe. There's one right back here, and there's one right I left right there. Right. So there, there's still rigidity around. You de definitely don't necessarily need this. But what my plan is to utilize it. So I'm going to cut right here. I'm going to cut right here. Same and same. And then I'm going to use this spare tire holder to make the bottom bracket, right? So I'm just going to use the one square, the square inch tubing. I'm going to go down, over, down, weld, down, over, up, weld. And then I'm going to connect them together and make a box and that'll be the bottom part of our storage and that way we utilize this thing and we keep the rigidity by welding more steel yeah. but then Kuko asked what happens to the spare tire what do you do with that you don't need a spare well we're gonna mount it to the door right there they sell a bracket it's like a hundred dollars and it bolts on but I'm too cheap for that in Cuban so I'm just going to make my own bracket and weld it together and the wheel will go there. If it falls off, it falls off. It's another day back over here at the garage. Uh, Justin's here helping me, he's somewhere around. And uh, we finally, well basically him, cut out the hard part of the tire, spare tire mount. This is what it looks like. It's this big hunk of metal, very heavy, very thick, and we have to cut it there. And I have no tools to cut that, so Justin brought this big monster thing. With this, he cut it mostly, and then he used this air tool to finish cutting the specialty corners that we couldn't get at. He just cut this corner a little more cleaner. I'm going to cut this one a little cleaner, and then we can get into cutting the one-inch square tubing to make a structure for support and then down and make our base. But this is where we're gonna have a secret compartment where I can either keep batteries from the solar panels or water jugs or tools or whatever I wanna keep in there. And then it'll be a, uh, I haven't decided if it's gonna be one panel that goes up that way or maybe two panels that come over this way. We gotta figure that out. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just trying to get your face, man. No one cares about my face. So they know it's you working. They know it's me working. They've seen it. Too hot. Going right through the pipe. Max one. No, max one. Leave that over. Max one. Yep. Five is fine. all the building I had to do because I, I made a giant hole earlier and I had to I had to walk it from left to right to left to right to get to the pipe because it was too hot earlier and I made a hole. All right this is probably going to be it for tonight. I want to give you guys progress. We got this bar welded in. We got that bar welded in. I cut across a little bit more evenly on this frame. And then I crawled across right back here a little bit more evenly on this frame. So it's a perfect square. Um, basically a base. Justin, you want to come jump on this? Not. This is the Marco jumping test. One, check. Let me hold on in case it breaks. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's solid. That's my favorite part about getting a welder, a little $100 Harbor Freight welder. Get yourself some gas. Start practicing. Do your own projects. You'll get better. Taylor told me this. Taylor did that. I was inspired and I went out and I just did it. And here we are. 
I've already welded a bunch of stuff. Matt welded up his whole front end on his 350Z. And here we are making a whole nother project with welding. Again, this is amazing. All of this was broken. I spot welded it. It did, doesn't look pretty because we didn't clean the yellow off very, very well. So the paint was kind of burning while I was uh, doing it. But it's sturdy. It's solid one piece now. It's a little hot. Um, I got to get a little piece to close that off. I got to get a piece of metal to close this one off. I have the metal right there. And then right here, we already have the rest of the material. We just got to make a box down and a square frame at the bottom. And that's it. It's ready to go after that. The floor is the one that's going to make the trap door. Oh man, I'm tired. I'm inside the office trying to get some AC because it's hot out there. Let me show what I've been working on. When you're working with metal, it's hot. You know, it's just everything is hot and it just gets hotter. And then you got to wear protective gear and it's just hot. So, day three of building this thing. The hole's already made. Uh, I've been here for a while now and I've made a square or a rectangle actually and uh i love that thing you just strap the the one inch square and then it just makes a perfect weld it's awesome um i only did like a little warm on each one in case i have to cut break it and uh and re-weld it and that's what it's going to look like the l bracket will be in the corner that's actually just standing there that's not even tacked or anything and then i got these other ones i just finished cleaning and uh that's that's every time you use that grinder thing still spinning um it's just hot everything gets hot you got to wear protective gear and it's hot and wearing wearing the welding mask on grinding um it gets really hot in there too and that's why i'm sweating so much i need to cut all my hair off but megan won't be happy if i do that anyways i'm gonna tack there i'm gonna put the other four at a level right and then i'm gonna tack them and i know it's not gonna be perfectly level because nothing it's ever perfect but it's okay, you know, a degree, two degrees off in either direction. You're not gonna see it by eye. That's just how everything is. Um, I'm gonna tack it over there, then present it here, tack it all at the top. And then if I like it and it's all good, I'll weld it all together. If we're done with this today, then tomorrow we can focus on the floor and the lid. And uh, you know, yeah, I still gotta cover this hole that's under here. That hole and that hole. All right, it's 11 p.m. I have to go to work in the morning. I was at work all day today, but this is in. There's nothing holding it up. It's just up on its own. It's still hot, but it's solid. I'm not done completely welding it. I'm just really tired and I'm already worn out from welding, but the top needs to get welded from the outside. And then also the bottom needs to go welded from the outside. Um, the square tube at the bottom is already done, um, but it is being held. It has a lot of weld already, so I just want to like make it nice and sturdy just for safety. Um, cutting that inch that I ended up cutting made it perfect. If you can see right here, it's right behind. It's about the height of my exhaust, a little higher, and it's right behind my hitch. So I'm pretty happy with the height. I th I, yeah, I thought you wanted to look at the plywood first. Going. No, bro, plywood's down here. You can see, made it to Home Depot. Walking around, trying to get all our uh, all our ingredients, whatever. Um, our budget today is 100 bucks. Why 100 bucks? Because I don't want to go over 100 bucks. I want to make this as cheap as possible for everyone, not just me. Um, we already got, what are those? Two by one inch and three by one inch. And I think those will work. We got 12 two by ones, three three by ones that might change we'll come back and get more if we need to i got a haircut i hope you like it we're looking at different choices in paneling and flooring um i already got some panels i'll show you get those later i found them on facebook marketplace for five dollars a panel but they're here at walmart for twenty dollars a pound 18 something um there's certain things you can do this is panels and you can use any of these colors for your wall or you can use the ones that have no these have rigids ri rigid uh, how do you say that ridges mm -hmm. they have like grooves this one doesn't so you could use this for a floor if you wanted to um, it's 1847 a panel you need two of them um, but we also have an alternative and we're gonna tell you all three and you guys can pick your own and we got to make a decision on ours too tell them you speak fast all right so this is the next alternative these are what they call peel and sticks 
These are like stickers. Um, they're vinyl pieces. So basically, it's a giant sticker, and you just put it to put it down on the ground. Already has the adhesive on the back. On the back. Uh, the only thing is, is we would need two boxes. Each box is about 34 bucks, 35 bucks, give or take. We need two of them, so that'd be that's uh, pushing the budget. It's a nice color. To the another, to another level. It's pretty good. I like that one the best. This is the other option. <laughs> it doesn't work. They turned it off. Uh, but this is laminate without the stick. The, the cool thing that we liked about it is that it's a little bit thicker. And, and it's, it's soft. Yeah, it's really soft. I like this one, but it has texture. I like yes. this one the best because it doesn't have texture. As much. As much, but it is thinner. So it'll be less whatever. And this is 76, uh, 76, 76 cents a square, a square foot. foot. This one's a dollar five. So Plus. far, this is going to cost us $45, but you need to buy adhesive. Which is which is like liquid go, nails, and that is going to be about five dollars a can, and we need about three cans of so fifteen dollars, so that adds up to sixty dollars. And the other one, what is that called? The stick on? The peel and stick. Um, it's about seventy. Bucks. We needed two boxes, which was, but it has the glue already and everything. Yeah. So, all right, dumb me forgot the camera at home and came here after work, but I'm glad Matt's here because he's here. He started prepping and tack welding the pieces and I want to show you this because I'm pretty excited. I'm tacking it? I've just been laying beads. Uh, well he's welding it. That's <laughs> what I meant to say. He's welding it. Um, basically the part that there was always a hole there and a bunch of little holes all over the place. The part that I cut out here is literally everything. I cut it up into a bunch of little pieces and I made it work for all the places that there was holes before and they're even like in line as you can see. I had to do two pieces over there out of the one piece to make it straight and then he's there's one right there that is the only awkward one because uh that one's a circle a hole but the rest all line up in their grooves which i'm pretty excited about because we got to lay uh wood in the lower grooves in these so all right keep on then thank you okay we made it back to the shop megan's here uh it's the weekend saturday we're gonna start working on the floor. Now it's all welded up. Got the wood laid out. We're gonna measure it all and screw it in. It's kind of a tight area here because Matt is also working on his car. Right. He's gonna be driving Grid Life next weekend, which is where we're trying to camp in the van. So the van has to be ready for next weekend. And uh, Matt's car has to be ready for next weekend. And he took it to like this party thing at OSW. And he like hit the wall way too many times. <laughs> so he's trying to fix a bash bar and the bumper and all that stuff back there. But uh, real estate is kind of tight right now because my other Z is up in the front and it's just causing a whole mess. And it's raining outside, so I can't even work outside. So the van's kind of like half in. We're working on this little tight spot, but it should be good. I'm gonna guide you guys through the steps that we're doing and we, the decisions we made on our floor. Had a little time lapse and we went crazy. We did the whole floor um, like that. Everything's in there. All the little pieces. The corner like that needs a little one right there and that's it. Um, I'm not gonna do these two yet because I have to create a door here or a lid. lid. Yes, thank you. Back at the shop, Matt's working on his truck. He's uh, installing some Mishimoto transmission cooler so that it doesn't overheat anymore on the uphills of Kentucky or North Carolina or Tennessee I don't even know where we're at we got all the panels in here my dad came to help he knows how to do the wood stuff he's working on a corner step over there we're making that a little flat further forward um, so it's, it has more uh, space and then we got to create the little box back here the lid anyway then the floor can go down and then we can work on the roof and then the walls. And we already got the floor panels. We got these right here. 
which I really like. My dad was saying at Home Depot, they give you free wood sometimes because it's the wood that they use for holding, uh, for strapping the pallets. So you gotta go find them in their trash bin. Oh, what you got there? Well, the old transmission cooler and then the new transmission cooler. That's, that's not gonna, how's that gonna go in the same place? They're like a totally different size. Oh shoot, it's meant for this? Yeah. It's for this truck. It's for this truck. So it's supposed to fit. Yeah. And it's and that got, big. And then I got all the lines, all correct line, all the hardware, everything. Yeah, it's like literally bolt in, no modifications needed. From Mishimoto. From Mishimoto. Dang. So they did all the hard work of it developing and engineering the tight spaces. Yeah. So now instead of the, the cooler like going up. Dude, the you're here. never you don't even need a temp sensor. Like <laughs> if you need a temp sensor with that, uh your transmission head gasket is blown. Transmission. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like the cooler used to go up to about like here, so it would kind of it wouldn't really get much airflow anyway. So now it'll do the whole span of the radiator. So, so it's actually going to work properly, yeah. and the fans behind that. So yeah, it's so not just uh, driving flow, which is what it is down here, yeah. but it's also fan flow. So it'll uh, it'll cool real nice. Even at idle, nice. My dad made this step right here. There's like a little thing right there for support. Another one right here for support. Right here for support, remember it's off. And then that way we can uh, put the whole panel panel right there. If we put a table here, you can utilize it from here. You don't need the whole step to get in here. This is plenty. So, and then those two right there in that corner, we just made it out of cardboard and my dad's cutting it out right now. That was a cardboard template. We just cut it out in the corner and let's go test fit. Our cardboard stencil did really good right there right there that was nice and uh, my dad's cutting out the step and then the front will be done then we got to do that little cubby hole and then we can do the back just cut out the wheel wells they're sort of square so that'll be easy we didn't tie this down then i put the floor underneath and then i'm going to mark the cuts that i already made and then it'll be nice and easy to do okay. Woo! floor's cut it's not nailed down I'm pretty excited about all those. What do you think, Sammy? Awesome. Really right? Cool. But we've been working for like four hours and we've only done the floor. This is harder than I thought. Okay, we're moving really fast. I don't have time to stop and record. Floor's done, that's cut, that's cut. My dad already finished that side. He's got the last plank to cut and that'll be ready. Um, we're using three quarter nails to uh, get through this and to the wood underneath, all of it. For this, this doesn't need to be that strong. It just needs to hold you. But yeah, three quarter, I'm sorry, they're not nails, they're staples. Three quarter staples with the air gun and that should hold it in place. We finished the floor yesterday, it's all in. And uh, this is like a lid, you'll see that later. Um, we're working on the roof now. My dad is cutting the little panels for right here. We're gonna put these little panels on each one of the beams and then we're just gonna put the panels on top. I'm working on the foam. I gotta cut it out and then glue it into place in each one of the ribs, between the ribs. My dad finished the beams. Uh, I finished the insulation. I glued them with this uh, 3M high strength uh, glue thing, contact adhesive. Um, we're gonna fill the, the ribs with the great stuff from the corners and um, the wiring. We took off this little light in here because that's gonna get covered. Uh, left this for the rear tail light and the wiring is gonna go like that you just gotta like that you just gotta take it off this back hinges thing that it's, it's on um, we got the panel right here we just gotta cut the holes for the lights and then it can start going up do a vloggy thing Matt do a vloggy thing I have to do one alright I have to do a vloggy thing so here's Marco filling it with shaving cream so he can save it for later when he has to shave <laughs> I ran two extra wires on either side just I'm not going to use them right now but just in case I ever want them they're up there and they come across to the side and then fill this for the, the beams it's kind of hard my, my dad says not to put too much an angel because it expands and then we'll like push stuff up apart so just put a, enough make sure you insulate all your wires and, and make them tight seal like that so you don't have to deal with this ever again he's extending these lights two right there two right here we measured it in the van to make it nice and square this is what they look like 
They're RV lights. Pretty excited about these. It's gonna be real nice. Roof is in, mainly. Um, we're doing this little piece right here. And to attach it, we put these little pieces right here. You just staple them. They don't have to be connected all the way, just enough to hold it. They have pressure from the top, so it works. Staples here, and another strip right there. Staples, and there you go. The way this works is, start nice and low right here. There's a little lip. You just place your wood right there, and then you put another screw right here, and then you just, you gotta bend it. And then you can put another screw, two more screws up here, and that gives it a nice curve. Kind of like the van there is some space there but that's okay we're not trying to get perfect um then the next one we did the same thing is screw down there then you put uh some kind of two by four with a long screw to pull that weight in and then another screw up there same concept right there and you can see the bend really good on that one right there from far away um and then right here what we're going to do is we're going to use r13 uh fiberglass like you would use in a house and it's just like rolls of fiberglass we're just gonna throw it in there. And then my dad is measuring the panel out right now. It's actually 48 inches high, so it's perfect, because that's four feet, that's how our panels are. By 68 Yay. at the bottom and like 62 at the top, so we gotta cut an awkward shape there. So he's gonna be the master of that. Um, but we're gonna cut that and this wall will be done. I bought this really cool RGB strip. Um, RGB is red, uh, green, blue lights, LEDs. That's so they make every color of the rainbow with the remote. And they're gonna go right in here. As you can see, they're right there. They stick right there. The wall, the wall will just go right there and it'll leave it kind of exposed a little bit. And then the light will shine to the roof. You'll see that. You'll see that finished product when we're done with that. But you do have to prepare for it. All the wiring is done and moved to the front. The switch is gonna be by the, the pillar on the passenger side and back door. We're moving really fast and things are just going now. But I'm really happy my dad's here to help. My friend Angel came through. He's an electrician and he works on houses and insulation all day. So he knows about this stuff. He brings even his own tools, brought water, music, prepared and ready. I will say, you cannot take a project on like this by yourself. You need at least one or two set of hands on top because to put that panel up was almost impossible or unbearable. It's really hard. Um, you need more people, so make friends. We're back to day three of interior work floors down my dad came earlier he started putting up the wall we got the wires the extra wires that ran through the roof worked out perfectly because I want to install speakers so we're gonna use those and we ran this uh, house appliance uh, wire down through there all the way up to here and that's where our uh, inverter is gonna go with our batteries and then we're gonna install house 110 plugs there and one over there by the TV my dad is currently making that two by four there that's where the TV is going to attach to and uh, the swing arm or the that thing over there on the ground and that's where the TV will be I got a roll of R13 and this is how we're doing the walls R13 is on the top which is a lot fatter and then the foam underneath where it's closer uh, the material to the wood so that way it fits perfectly and it's going to be better insulation from the top to the bottom. RGB strips, this metal, comes with this thing. It's like a worn light diffuser and it's supposed to click to the thing but I knew it was never going to click because it's, it's not very perfect. But look at that. You just literally just lay it in there in between the roof. Just It's not clicked in, it's just there. It doesn't need to be clicked in. Nothing needs to hold that. Look at that. It looks great. It's going to be lit up with an RGB. Me and my dad are cutting the bottom foam because we put the R13 on top. You can see there's the 2x4s there so we cut it so you get it over and that's that. And then Angel is over here working on getting the, the wiring done on this wall and getting it finished up and ready. The, the wheel well we're going to cover with some more uh, wall material. Just got to make a, uh, like a no, little L bracket that attaches to the corner to make it more square. Finishing touches on that speaker. The whole panels are up. Everything's up. The strip is in there. 
it ain't too pretty because there's some gaps. Obviously, it's a van, but it doesn't look bad. That's going to be good with the RGB up there, the sides in there. It's okay. Um, yeah, that's it. We got a outlet here. This is like one my dad had that was used in yellow, but later we're going to upgrade to like the USB kind and all that as long as the wires are run and it's there at work. Up front, we have another plug right here and that's where the TV is going to go. It's going to go right there and then there's a, TV, a wall mount right there that's going to go there so the TV could come up this way and you can see it while you're sitting down or you can fold it up against the wall that way and when the bed turns in, the sofa turns into a bed, you can watch TV that way. And that's where it'll be plugged in. There will be a some kind of cabinet that goes right here. And that's where you can keep your appliances and drawers and stuff and cover that. And then for these little gaps at the bottom, we're going to do a, just, I think it's called crown molding or something like that. Some molding for like a house. This is what the sofa is going to look like in there. This is one of those clickety things. You click it and it turns into a bed. I'll show you in a second. But uh, that's where it's going to be. And then the TV is going to be right here in front of you. And just doing it you go like that you go like that and then it turns into a bed and it's like a perfect fit right now side to side it's kind of small but it works and for a um <laughs> and for person. a no for a uh track side sleeper it's not bad pretty excited about it insulated van with tv with a sofa bed Sweet. that's a lot Lights. yeah Yep, the lights, the speakers. The speakers will get upgraded later. Those are some I found in in the shop. One of my, one of my. Hi. And then you just sit right here, and you play video games with the TV right there. Xbox Live. Plenty of space. Yeah, Xbox Live, whatever. I'm gonna put a little curtain up there so it separates. And then we got all this space back here with another wall outlet, wall outlet behind it. And then you can store tools or whatever you need to store for the track right back here. This is going to be the end of this basic video of how to insulate and wall panel your uh, van. This is a build for a track side van. So when you go to the track, you're racing or drifting or any kind of motorsport, uh, maybe motorcycle, uh, racing motorcycles. Um, you can bring your van. And then you can watch TV on the way up if it's a long trip and you can enjoy it. Your friends can enjoy it. And then at night when you uh, are ready to sleep, you don't have to go stay at a hotel, leave your stuff at the track, unsafe. You're right here, van's right there. In the future, this would have AC. It would have a, one of those little Honda generators. It's quiet, so it would run the AC and it's its own apartment right in there. Um, the sofa is kind of something I found online. It fits perfectly in there for a sofa. It's not as practical for a bed, so maybe I will make one in the future. But for now, it's pretty good. Um, hope you guys enjoy uh, watching this. If you have any questions on the insulation, any kind of stuff about that, then just let me know. Overall, budget-wise, I've only spent $170 for this whole build, for this whole insulation, for the panels. I did get lucky. I found the wall panels and the roof panel. They, that's why they look like 80s or 70s type panels because I found them for five dollars on Facebook Marketplace. Number one thing you want to do is you want to look on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, and you want to look for panels like that from uh, Overstock of Construction Crew or something like that. Um, and the same thing with two by fours, Home Depot gives them out for free, like my dad said. So that's how you keep your budget down. $170 to insulate and panel your van. There's a lot of work behind it, but it's not bad. That's including all the screws and insulation and the free two by four that's everything and then the sofa was eighty dollars so that's different but just doing the van and insulating it that's a uh, hundred and seventy dollars the lights cost me thirty dollars the rgb you don't need but they cost me another twenty dollars the tv and the wall mount you don't need but i got the wall mount as well for like twenty dollars and then on amazon and the tv my girlfriend had one that she's not using it's a 32 inch Sony or something, so you can find something like that too. This is gonna be the end of this video. Thank you, Angel, for coming by and hanging out. Like I said, you always need friends or family to help you. Gracias, Bobby. Dang it, high five, <laughs> high five. You can't see him, but um, you, need, you need hands, you need other brains, you need to bounce ideas. Things sometimes didn't go as planned and you need to come up with a solution. 
we did this in basically three days so sunday monday and tuesday we did this in three days with, with three people i did the welding over the week after work but that i took my time and i had to like remove and stuff and welding you you probably won't have to do that i only did that because the van was like a thousand dollar van so thank you guys for watching liking subscribing and uh stay tuned we got a lot more improvements we're doing here for future stuff uh cabinets and a lot of other stuff you still haven't seen the molding you haven't seen the tv and the playstation up so stay tuned on the channel subscribe more videos to come but this is practical practically it and i hope you enjoyed it write some comments below thank you bye